Why, hello and welcome to the FDFL Weekly Update, the longest-running weekly episodic fantasy football show out there. Now, I am thrilled that you're joining me today. I'm Brett, the host of this show, and, of course, the owner of the two-time league champion Hulkamaniacs. And I just love doing this show because I love fantasy football, and I think fantasy football is great. Yeah, and speaking of great, we still have two teams in our league that are undefeated. That's outstanding. That takes so much skill. That takes so much commitment. I applaud the two of you. Both Adams are off to just an amazing start. I, I am inspired by your greatness. And I wish some of that inspiration would rub off on me. But you know what? Golly gee, it hasn't yet. Because the Hulkamaniacs... We're still looking for that first victory, but I know we're going to find it. I know. You know what? Actually, something to kind of cheer me up right now to help me get in the right mood for this. I've got something down here. I brought a couple snacks. I, I brought a, a juice box here and a little more of a juice pouch. And I got one of my favorite little treats, my Twinkie. I'm going to go ahead and get this up. Now, um, you know, there is a team in the league that is on record. I can't get this stupid. What the? God. You know what? It doesn't matter. It's fine. It's fine. I'll just eat my Twinkie and put a smile on my face. There is a team that is on record pace, and maybe not the record you want your name attached to. More on that a little bit later. And also, a brand new segment tonight. Now, we here at the FTFL Update, we took the Reapers' advice seriously. We were maybe a little down on ourselves. And really, what's not to love about fantasy football? And so, not only am I giving you all the great coverage you can normally find on the show, tonight, a brand new segment with my best friend, Bart. I can't wait. Take a little bite of this. Delicious. Twinkie. All right. Well, on to the games. The first game pitted the 3-0 Radioactive Monkeys against the 1-2 Valhalla Vandals. Now, Valhalla, he put up a fight. However, just didn't quite get it done this week. 82 points for Peter to Salt Marsh's 110. That is quite a score. Uh, if you're Adam, 33 points for Diggs, 24 points for Jalen Hurts. Josh Jacobs, oh, Welcome back. I'm so excited that you had a great game, Josh Jacobs. 18 points for him. That's more than his first three weeks combined. Thumbs up from the FTFL weekly update. Tyler Bass chipped in 14. Now, Raheem Mostart, who the week before had an amazing, a career game. Not quite this week. Only three and a half points. You know what, Raheem? You'll get him next time. Uh, right now, Adam is averaging 108 points a game. In Last season, he averaged 86. The season before that, 72. I'm not sure what Adam is doing this season, but boy, oh boy, he really has got it all figured out and firing all cylinders. Bravo, Adam. If you're Peter, Christian McCaffrey, he really is swell. 37 and a half points for him, 12 for Mahomes, 11 for Brandon Ayuk, who did play this week. And I know, Peter, we all make mistakes. It's okay. I know it stinks to have to pay $5, but if we didn't have rules... Where would we be? I mean, it would be silly. It would be silly. Four of Peter's players were three points or under, which probably led to him losing. But that's all right. He falls to one and three. But it's not 0-4. It's not 0-4. Next up, the other 3-0 team, the Southbound Pachyderms. Now, when I think of the Southbound Pachyderms, I often try to figure out which is my favorite Pachyderm. Is it the Hippo? Is it the Rhino? I mean, I'm a big fan of the Pig and all of its delicious cuts and meats that it provides. But in the end, I think they're probably all just really great creatures. Anyway, sorry, I digress. Uh, Adam's team comes in at 3-0, and taking on the Architect at 1-2. and Now, of course, Matt has had a lot of points on his bench, has really struggled to figure out who to start. And that trend sadly continued this week. But I look at that and I just know that, Matt, you're this close, buddy. You're this close. Keep it up. And not only will you close that gap, you'll exceed it, my friend. You'll exceed it. Anyways, your score this week didn't exceed Adams. 69 and a half points for Matt. 94 points for Swart. If you're Swart, Russell, 
with a pretty smile on his face, Wilson, got 22 points. Zeke Elliott got 19. Um, Cook and Kamara both chipped in 10 and a half. Now, Kamara's points came on 13 receptions for 33 yards. And I thought, boy, that's not a lot of yards. But they sure do trust him with that football to throw it to him 13 plus times. That's saying something. That's the kind of player I'd want on my team. Uh, C.D. Lamb had 10 points. Philly's defense, only five. And for some weird reason, Adam left Dallas' defense on the bench. And I know he's a really big fan of Dallas' defense, so maybe he just pushed the wrong button. Anyways, they scored 26 points, and it really didn't matter because Adam, in the end, he won. But I suppose he could have won more. But that's okay. If you're mad, Kyron Williams had 21.5 points in a career game. Bijan Robinson at 10.5 and, and Tua scored 10. Four players were at four and under, including George Kittle. He had just a half a point, and poor George. It was his worst game since week 12 in 2021 where he's had at least one target. I, I know that's not the kind of games he wants to put up, especially for Matt. But you know what, George? Matt, next week, you'll get him. I promise. Now, Matt did again have 67 points. I'm not quite the 70-plus in the last two weeks. So you know what? Things are already looking up. Way to go, Matt. All right, last game here before our brand new segment. Team, you know what? John's team. John's team coming into two and one, taking on the mixing cocktails of two and one. And as I said last week, this is for second place in the division. And for now, in a rather low scoring game. But you know what? I like those hard fought wins too. 65 and a half for John, 40 for Andy. If you're John, Justin Herbert had 20 points. Now, he's on bye next week, and yeah, he fractured his finger. But John, there's nothing you can't do if you have the power of positivity. And I know, John, you have that. I can see it. Every time I see your smiling face, or at least what I, you know, yes, when I see your smiling face. Harrison Bucker, 13. DeAndre Swift, 12. John had five players at four and a half points or below, but it still was enough to get him that victory. If you're Andy... Garrett Wilson, eight and a half points, five players at four and below, and really not much really to cheer for. Joe Burrow had two points. Now, Justin Fields on your bench, and, you know, Andy, I, I too sometimes think, wouldn't it be nice if after the game we could just swap in a player, and, you know, like just kind of a mulligan, a do-over. No, you know, actually, I'd like to play this guy in half. You know, that would, I just think that would be fair, and it would make people feel better. Um, and if we were playing that way, you would have won this week, Andy. You know what? And if you would have started Devin O'Kane over one of your running backs, that might have been enough too. But sadly, we don't play that way. So I'm sorry. I wish you would have won. You fall to two and two while John's team moves to three and one. All right, folks, I promised you earlier there would be a brand new segment, a brand new segment this week, just to help, you know what? Taking the Reaper's advice, put a little pep in our step, bring you a smile to put on your face and a nice warm little fuzzy to tuck down in your pocket for some time later when you're feeling blue. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, let us bring to you for the first time ever, Fantasy Confessions. Well, hey there, everybody. It is your good friend, Bart, and welcome to the inaugural edition of Fantasy Confessions. Now, let me explain what this is. You know, Brett was saying we had to do some things to kind of, well, hold on, full stop here for a second. I need to apologize. I am not very camera friendly today. I was helping Brett get that straw in that little pouch thing of his, and wouldn't you know, slipped right out. My fingers poked me in the eye. I'm hoping in a couple days I'm back up to full speed. Now, all right, I'm back to what the task at hand, if you will. Um, we said, Brett was like, we need to kick this show up a notch, you know, give people something to smile about, kind of silly, and said, so what if we open up the FTFL inbox and say, listen, send us your fantasy football confessions. What are some of the dumb things, like dumb trades you've offered, dumb players you've picked up, players you wish you wouldn't have cut, that kind of stuff. You don't have to attach your name to it. It's anonymous, which maybe makes people more willing to share. And so we've had this kind of up for a couple of weeks. A few submissions have come in, so I present to you the first three fantasy confessions. All right, here we go. Uh, someday, I would like to eat some corn dogs, and while I'm eating one, I'd like to stick the other... Wait a minute. But first, I'd put mustard on it because of the sensation... Oh, my gosh. What? This... 
that's not, you know what? Hold on a second. I don't think this was, maybe this wasn't meant for us. I don't, I, you know, I'm going to go ahead and just pass on that one. And I'm going to move on to the next one. Here we go. It says, well, I mean, I guess this one's at least about football. All right, here we go. When I watch my fantasy football team play, I like to wear ladies' underwears on my head for, to bring me good luck. I, you know what, I'd like... Is that... J you know what, at least this was... I guess this was at least about football. It wasn't exactly what I think we were going for, but you know what... I feel like we're picking up some momentum. All right, here's the last one. It's a bit short. It just says, Saturday night, a pool full of jello, your mom. Now, wait a damn minute. What the? That? You know what? That is absolutely not what we were looking for on this show. The fantasy confessions are supposed to be dumb and silly things you have done in fantasy football that you didn't want your name attached to, but you wanted to get it off your chest. So you know what? We will try this again. We'll open up the FTF inbox, FTFL inbox, send us your deepest, darkest fantasy confessions, and we'll go ahead and check back in a couple weeks. We hope you enjoyed the initial installment and enjoy fantasy football. I'm uh, I'm not sure that's that's what we wanted that segment. To, to, you know what? We'll move on. Hey, good news! I got my straw in my juice pouch. It's delicious. Mmm, fruit punch, my favorite. All right, back to the games. Next up, make Cray America great again. Coming in two. You know what? I think Cray America's always been great. There was never a need to make it great again. In 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 reality. I mean, maybe make Cray America greater, the greatest, but it's pretty tough to improve on what you're already doing, Sid. Thumbs up from the FTFL Weekly Update. Uh, coming in against the Pack Attack at 1 and 2, the league champion. Bravo, Eric. Bravo, all hail the champ. Uh, he comes in at 1 and 2. Now, Eric put up a champion's performance this week with 109.5 points, and that would have been good enough to beat everybody else except the person he was playing. That's a bummer. Sid scored 116. Eric, you may not have won the game, but you definitely got the moral victory. If you're Sid, David Montgomery, oh, he really played hard and ran well against the Packers on Thursday night. I mean, it's, even though he was against my team, I can appreciate a really good performance. And that's what David Montgomery had. Uh, Pika Nakua, who up until, I don't know, a couple weeks ago, wouldn't have been recognized had he walked into a store called hey everybody it's pika nakua <laughs> that was a, that was a joke that that was a that was a joke <laughs> he really has caught the league by fire and somehow sid has him on his team also like nico collins these are players that i know some of us have seen like oh i bet that guy would be real swell to get on the waiver wire oh well, wait he's already on sid's team sid somehow has a way of taking guys and just molding them into champions. Guys that have no business being very good at all, yet Sid makes it work each and every time. And that, that is really something that puts a smile on my face. Nice job, Sid, nice job. Um, Justin Jefferson, 19 points. Um, Mark Andrews, welcome back. Two touchdowns, great day for him, 18 and a half. Jared Goff, 10. As I said, Nico Collins, 29 and a half points. He was on the bench. Just another player that Sid can just hold on to knowing that he saw talent, maybe when no one else did. And that's that's special. Uh, if you're Eric, Josh Allen, just bzzz, bzzz. No, there's not a B in here. Don't worry. I'm safe. I'm safe. Bzzz. That's the buzzsaw. That's the buzzsaw. Bzzz. Yeah, Josh Allen had 40 points. And sadly, it wasn't enough. Derrick Henry even had his best game of the season, the 20 and a half. Um... Moore had 18. Amari Cooper only mustered a half a point. Now, had Amari Cooper played better, but you know what? I know Amari Cooper gave it his all. So a half point was everything he could do on that day for Eric. Romeo Dobbs scored 10 on the bench. Now, had he played instead of Cooper, Eric would have won. But I don't want to dwell on that. Let's celebrate Eric for 109.5 points this week. One victory on the board. And, of course, our dear 
reigning champion. Now, Eric, this is the one thing I mentioned earlier. You are the team who's chasing a record this year. Currently, you are having 104.9 points scored against you per week. If that holds, it would be the most points on average per week scored against any opponent in the history. Now, back in, in 2020, Swart ended his season with 104 points per game against him. He finished 3-10. and 10. Now, Eric, I know you'll finish better than 3-10. and 10, And maybe, just maybe, that average against you would come down as well. All right. Well, the final game pits, oh, it's my team. This makes me happy. Just to see the Hulkamaniacs in print, it really is something. Coming in at 0-3, taking on my dear friend Jeff and his team, as I affectionately call them, Manamana. They were also 0-3. Now, Jeff, good news, buddy. You got your first victory. I, on the other hand, am just going to keep trying because that's what you do. Always try. Uh, 64 and a half for me, 67 for Jeff. Ooh, it was a nail biter. Um, too bad I just clipped my fingernails. Otherwise, I mean, I would have had something to work with. But you know what? That's okay. If you're Jeff, A.J. Brown really shone bright this week. He is the superstar. However, I do see that you are trading him away. That's a bummer, Jeff. He helped you win. And maybe he was going to help you win again. But now he's with Peter's team. 30 and a half points for A.J. Brown and his swung son for your team. Dak had 10 and four of your players scored four points or less. And you did have 21 points on your bench. So really not many points at all this week. But in the end, it was just enough. And for me, Jordan Love had 18 points. Brandon Aubrey chipped in 12. Amon Ra, 10 and a half. Kenneth Walker the third, 10 points. Uh, Aaron Jones, half point. Now, we didn't know that Aaron Jones was going to be on a snap count. That would have been useful information, but that's okay. I don't want Aaron Jones to get hurt again, and I'm just glad he was able to get out there and touch the ball five times. It was really it just gave me confidence seeing him out there again with his teammates. Uh, T. Higgins, he had a rough day, not didn't catch a lot of balls, and he fractured some ribs, which means I won't get points from him for the time being. But I have other players. And really, T, the important thing is that you get well soon. You know, actually, speaking of that, Aaron, I want you to get well too soon, buddy. I miss seeing you out there. Now, Isaiah Pacheco was on my bench this week, sadly. 21 and a half points he scored. That would have been enough to give me a victory. But you know what? It just wasn't my time. And that's okay. Because after all, in the end, fantasy football is great. And I love fantasy football. All right, well, let's wrap this swell show up. Uh, Stud of the week, Stefan Diggs, 33 points. I mean, Josh Allen, 40, and Christian McCaffrey, 37 and a half. Both of those guys outscored him. You know what? Usually I wouldn't count him because it was in a loss, but you know what? Let's share the wealth. You three, all three are the studs of the week. Yay! Uh, the dud of the week, you know what? There's no reason for me to put anyone down. There's no reason for me to mention that Joe Burrow only scored two points after being traded to Andy. That would be unfair to Joe Burrow, so I won't do that. There's no dud of the week. Um, the cringy, I mean, again, I feel bad, you know, poking fun at someone. Um, you know, even though I made a couple terrible mistakes this week, I know I'll learn from them. So me swapping Pacheco out for Higgins isn't really something that I guess needs to be mentioned as cringy worthy, so I won't talk about it. All right, week five. Yes, my next chance for a victory. This is it. Uh, the Radioactive Monkeys coming in at 4-0, oh, taking, taking on Cramerica's been great all along at 3-1. and one. This one is going to be a battle for first place. Wow, it's going to be something. Next, the Southbound Pachyderms coming in at 4-0, oh, taking on John's team at 3-1. and one. Yet another battle for first place in the other division. The Mixing Cocktails at 2-2, two and two, taking on me, the Hulkamaniacs at 0-4, oh and, and the first annual Brother Bowl, um, excuse me, Pack Attack coming in at 1-3, and three, taking on Mana Mana at 1-3, and three, and lastly, but definitely not leastly, my dear friend Peter coming in at 1-3, and three, taking on my other dear friend Matt at 1-3. and three. So far, almost everybody has a victory but everyone has been having fun. And I know that I had fun. I hope you've enjoyed watching the show. Until I get to see all of my dear friends again, peace.
stupid. All this crappy, depressing fantasy football garbage. Oh, I'm going to give you a reprieve. Oh, get a hold of yourself. Oh, take your Xanax. You know what? If I had some Xanax, I'd turn that sideways and I'd stick it directly up his candy ass. Can't believe this leave me just blowing in the breeze. Oh, yeah. You know what? No, I'll, I'll, I'll just, I'll give you another chance. Why? What is the point? Why am I sitting here staring at all of this kind of stuff week after week, pretending to be happy about it? this? Is just crap, straight garbage. You know what? Screw the Reaper. Screw him. God, I like Twinkies. <sighs> Juice box.